Well, this is a change of pace. Not only is this news not mediocre, it's downright amazing. Leonard Boyarsky has joined Obsidian. If you don't know who that is, I'm gonna fill you in on it. For the past years, Leonard Boyarsky has been the lead world designer of Diablo 3. Now, I've got a lot of issues with Diablo 3, mostly because they uh, kind of ruined it to make room for that uh, auction house, which they closed, but didn't completely unruined again afterwards but i like the world the way it was made and guess who was in charge of that well leonard boyarsky but that's not his main accomplishment well yeah you could say that the game that sold over 10 million copies would be someone's main accomplishment but leonard boyarsky has had a very big influence on a lot of important games the kind of games you're gonna see well too often on this channel. He was the project leader and art director of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which you know is one of my favorite games. He did art, dialogue, design for Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Another Troika game, which again is one of my favorites. It's a game where you can climb through windows. Do you know how many RPGs, open world games in general, don't let you climb through windows? Most of them. I mean it, most of them. You can only do it in Fallout 4 because of a bug that lets you use items like chairs and couches that are in the house and then you can just use them through the window and teleport yourself in. Otherwise you can't do that. But this game will let you use windows, which probably means that every other game is a Mac fanboy. But that's another issue. You'll see Arcanum around here soon, I promise. I accidentally looked it over when it came to that uh, don't be a hero bit. I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry. And I'll do better next time with a show about Arcanum itself. Well, not next time, but sometime this or next year. And before that, Leonard Boyarsky worked at a studio called Interplay, where, do you know what he did? Fallout. Yep. You wanna know the reason why Fallout looks like Fallout? Why it's stayed in a futuristic 1950s retro sci-fi thing? It's his fault. He did it. He was the art director of that game. He worked on a lot of stuff for that game because because initially it was made by a handful of people. You know what else was in that handful of people? Tim Kane, the creator of Fallout, who also worked at Troika on Arcanum and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, and who now also works at Obsidian. He works on the other side of the room from Leonard Boyarsky. No, I mean it, he posted this picture. Now, all they need to do is get Jason D. Anderson from, I think, he works at Turtle Rock now, and the gang's all here. Still, it's very important that these people work at Obsidian now, because Obsidian is basically what's left of Interplay that isn't currently in an exile. It's a studio that isn't afraid to make games that are interesting and feel a bit old old school-ish like they did with Pearls of Eternity. Games that put a very big accent on world, on characters, on story, on the stuff that well made things like Vampire the Masquerade shine. Well, Bloodlines anyway. There was a game before Bloodlines and uh, it, it was okay, but the dialogue made me want to punch myself with a mallet in the face under the gravity of Jupiter every time Kristoff started talking to Aneska again because they never shut up. They never do. And they talked in that old timey fashion in a way that was just Gah. But back to this idea. What are Tim Kane and Leonard Boyarsky gonna work on now that they're both at Obsidian? Well, Obsidian has a new game, Tyranny, which is in development now. It's been revealed. It's been in the works for a while, it seems. And it's published by Paradox. Now, I ask you, what else does Paradox own right now? Yep, you guessed it, White Wolf. And Paradox has said that they're looking to making new games based on the license, on Vampire, on Werewolf, on Mage, The Ascension, Promethean, the Frankenstein thing and all sorts of other stuff. And look, some of the people that made arguably the best 
feeling game of the series are working at Obsidian, so it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to imagine that maybe they're gonna work on a new game set in the world of darkness. And even if they don't, it's still probably gonna be a really interesting game, because again, these people through their entire career have been all about going against the grain, against the trend, against just about everything. That's why Fallout was Fallout and wasn't a fantasy game. That's why Arcanum was damn near impossible to find a replacement for. In terms of setting, in terms of concepts, in terms of world, technology even, the way it all interacted. Though if you do know some game that could replace it, tell me in the comments. I'd like to check it out, especially if it has somewhat better combat. Well, that's it for this edition. One of those few rare gems where something not only turned out to not be mediocre, but was actually quite amazingly awesome. It's like Christmas came early, or Easter, because it's gonna be in a few weeks anyway. The calendar is a bit different this side of the Berlin Wall, is what I'm saying. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate, because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue, by using the link in the description. Or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.